Today I'm going to talk about the new album by Boundaries called Death Is A Little More. As always, I'll give you some background on the band and I'll talk about the songs. Then I'll give my final thoughts and score. I'll also talk about my feelings on the genre itself, as this is not one of my go-to genres. So this is the type of review that I do not do very much. Now for those of you who watch my channel, I have a tendency to talk a lot about a band's history. When I do retro reviews, I go into a lot more detail, but with new releases, I try to keep it brief. But with that being said, I need to first define what is metalcore and then talk about what it has become, because this will tie into what I'm talking about later. By definition, metalcore is a combination of metal and hardcore punk. One of the earliest examples of this type of band is Converge. Then came other bands that were more mainstream, such as Kill Switch and Gage, who had a popular album in 2002 called Alive or Just Breathing. There was also Waking the Fallen by Avenged Sevenfold. These were bands that were popular in the early 2000s. Then it just evolved into so many other genres that ended up with the word core at the end. So the genre is pretty wide. Now, why am I explaining this? It's because this band has a sound that goes back to the basics. This band is just old school hardcore with metal hence the name Metalcore. In other words, this is an old-school metalcore band, and they are very heavy with crushing guitar riffs, harsh vocals, some clean vocals, but they don't sound as whiny as uh, modern metalcore or screamo bands. The band is heavy, and if you like that old-school, late 90s metalcore, I think you might like this. The name of the album is Death Is A Little More. The band is from Connecticut in the U.S., this is their third full-length album. The album was produced by Randy LeBouf, who also worked with bands such as Gideon, The Castro Screen, and Kubla Khan. Their inspiration came from Dante's Inferno. Let me read a quote from vocalist Matthew McDougall. It's an idea I took and largely applied to the record thematically. Death is Little More is about life at its most difficult. You are not going to end your life but you're so stressed and overwhelmed that your life ending would feel like just another incident on the list. The concept stuck with me. The tone of the album is very angry. If you read the lyrics of the songs, it sounds like someone who was just really pissed off. For example, the opening track, Turning Hate Into Rage, has lines like, I hope it's loud and clear, I fucking hate you. In the track, Darkness Shared, there's a line, What's going to happen when I cut your head off, you stupid motherfucker? <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, the album is just very angry. There are 12 songs, and all songs are under three and a half minutes, so the album is only about 33 minutes long. Opening track, Turning Hate Into Rage, opens with some brutal guitar riffs played on both the low and high end of the neck. They incorporate a lot of stop-star rhythms, and the vocals are very intense and angry. The song is a little over two minutes, but this band likes to play with time signatures a lot, blending stop-star guitar riffs with more traditional chugging. Darkness Shared starts with some machine gun riffing, and then goes full force with the aggressive vocals and heavy guitar riffs. The guitar riffs keep coming at you and the rhythms keep changing. This is the first song with some clean singing and these vocals help add melody to the song. But they don't make it sound too much like modern metalcore. The song also uses some fuller and more dissonant guitar chords that gives it a different type of tone. The song is still very aggressive. Track three, like Pedals from a Stem, just goes all out with some of the heaviest sounds that you're going to hear. There are some heavy and brutal screams coupled with pummeling guitar riffs. Then it ends with a quiet atmospheric section that just lasts a few seconds before the next song. Easily Erased was next, and this is one of the more accessible songs with more of a contrast between the harsh and clean vocals. The song is still very brutal with the heavy pummeling guitar riffs. Despite all the heaviness, the song has a lot of melody. 
This was also one of the singles, so they probably wanted to release something a little more melodic. But like I said, this was one of the only uh, melodic songs. The next song, Curse to Remember, has some melodic clean vocals, but this is contrasted with the heavy and aggressive vocals. This song has some of the heaviest riffs and some of those harsh screams that were very apparent with those early metalcore bands from the late 90s. Song also has some atmospheric parts towards the end to give it a different sound. Next is the title track, Death Is A Little More, and this one brings back that sheer brutality that they had on the first few songs on the album. I guess a good word to describe this would be crushing. But despite the heaviness, they add some melody during the guitar solo, so I thought it was a nice touch. A Pale Light Lingers has a guest star named uh, Lochi Kiok who's the vocalist of the band Alpha Wolf. The song uses some stop-start guitar riffs and an atmospheric section where the drum beat almost sounded like gunfire. This track stands out because they use some of those tremolo-picked guitar riffs that creates these spooky sounds that are used to contrast the heavy guitar riffs. I'm always ready for what's ever coming. Face the Blade is a very angry song. Uh, as are all the songs in the album, uh, they used some more dissonant guitar chords and it almost gave it a machine-like or industrial sound. Then there's a spoken part that adds a different element to the song. It kind of reminded me of Henry Rollins for uh, some reason. I thought that was a nice touch. Scars on a Soul begins uh, with heavy stop-start riffs and... Uh, they let you know that this is going to be one of the more extreme songs on an already extreme album. They continue with the heavy and dissonant guitar riffs as well as some clean vocals. Blame's Burden features another guest. His name is Marcus Vick and he's the vocalist of Invest Animate. The song is a bass guitar intro. As I listen to this album, I'm finding there are a lot of intricacies here that you start to notice after repeat listens. The song also had some clean singing uh, to contrast with the early growls. Blood Soaked Salvation has another guest named Matt Honeycutt, who is the vocalist of Kublai Khan. You can hear the difference in the two vocalists used, and this adds another layer to the song. The last song is Inhale the Grief, and this continues with a heavy and brutal sound that we have been hearing throughout this album. There's some vocal layers here and some intense drumming, as well as some atmospheric sections. And now for my final thoughts. I guess it's kind of hard for me to review because I don't listen to a lot of metalcore, and I know it seems that I'm reviewing this one very early, but I uh, had a promo of it, and I listened to it multiple times over the past two days, as it was a short album. So I think it's one of those albums where you just put on your headphones, listen to it multiple times, and you want to get to hear all these like different things going on. So I liked it. It's not easy listening music. It's for those of you who like extreme metal and that classic metalcore sound. I think it's a good album. My score is an 8 out of 10. Let me know what you think in the comments. Check out this video right here. Thanks for watching. Please like this video. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe if you have not already. I do rock and metal reviews, rankings, and more. I will uh, see you in the next one.